In September 2024, core inflation, which excludes vol volatile items like food and energy, reached 27.43%, a 5.59 percentage point jump from the 21.84 recorded a year earlier. Now, analysts are concerned that inflation could remain high, driven by external pressures such as exchange rate volatility, surging fuel costs, and ongoing increases in transportation and logistics expenses. These factors may further stoke inflationary pressures in the coming months, especially if the Naira depreciates or global commodity prices climb. A public affairs analyst, Mustafa Ewilla, joins me now for more discussion. Good morning to you, Mustafa. Good morning, Justin. Yeah. Thank, thank it's been a while we had a conversation. As in, uh, Since then, uh, uh, fuel has been increased since we last talked. Yes. Okay, uh, and now um, the NBA just uh, released and data. Like they do um, mid month every month. And uh, did it shock you that? Um, the inflation um, rate, uh, the CPI actually jumped um, for September. Let's start from there. So, um, honestly speaking, I, I, I mean, a lot of experts have expected that this will happen. Mm. If we have looked at the trajectory of what has happened since the beginning of this year, from the increase in petrol to increase in electricity tariff to every other sector, we've seen that this will happen. We've had these predictions you know, a few months back. Mm. And, uh, and I think that if I'm not mistaken, the inflation rates in sometimes in the August was about 32.15 percent. Yes, it was. And now, now we have it at 32.70 percent. I think this is a big problem. Mm. Uh, a few months ago, we've seen what people have, you know, clamored about. Or now they want to go on hunger strike. Mm. How they want to go on hunger protest. This for me is not. Uh, the number is really, really a huge number, and I think mm. that uh, we haven't really seen uh, the worst to come. So what I think uh, is doable within the monetary policy framework uh, is that um, CBN really has a lot to do regarding this. We've seen that any country country that battles with inflation rates of this figure, such countries don't have a stabilized economy. Oh. Right now, the highest the country that has the highest inflation rates in the world is Argentina. Okay, they have it for the, the, the inflation rate right now stands about oh. I think two hundred seventy six percent followed by Syria, about 140%. If you look at top 15 countries in the world that has highest inflation rate, Nigeria is number 13 on that list. So this is not something very present, something very presentable for us as a country. In Nigeria, of population of over 232 million people, yeah. for us to be battling with these social economic problems and within our monetary policy framework is really, really sad. Now, so what I think is doable, what I think is doable because experts have even said that for us to stabilize our economy, for us to curb the SSCs in our liquidity yeah. ratio in terms of what is playing out in the economy, yeah. we need to, what the CBN needs to do first, according to expert opinion, yes, one of the ways to curb inflation is to increase benchmark interest rates. But we have seen that CBN has increased interest rate three times this year. It's not working. It's not working. So generally, they've increased interest rate. And they increase in more July. by the day, and businesses keep it. on suffering. <laughs> so it's so, like it's as though the textbook approach is really not working. It's not really it's working. Not working. So, in no, it should way. have worked. To be honest, I okay. said something on this platform one time. Yeah. If you want to increase interest rates yeah. to curb inflation, which is one of the germane ways of curbing inflation, you there's a, the experts have agreed that. There must be a time frame within the time you increase the interest rate. You must allow at least twelve to eighteen month time frame for for that um, for that policy to take full effect on the economy. Before you but increase, but we, or practically yeah. we do that almost every month. Yeah, so so increasing the interest rate now has become a quarterly <laughs> phenomenon by CBN. Now I mean three times this year already, <laughs> and with what is going again now that inflation has increased to thirty seven. The further increases, and the more they uh, increase it, the more yeah. you know cost of funds. Increases and businesses suffer. Manufacturers yes. are lamenting by the day. No, I mean, no doubt. One of the some of the ripple effects of uh, having this huge uh, inflation figure is there's going to be a reduced amount of purchasing mm. power. People can no longer afford to buy anything. Mm. Now, it, it, people are people are even saying that hundred thousand naira right now. Mm. I mean, hundred thousand naira right now is the new ten thousand naira. So what you can buy with hundred thousand naira, ten thousand naira back then. Mm. If you don't have one thousand naira, you cannot buy it. So, okay. and so we've seen that purchasing power has cut across every sector of the economy. People mm. can no longer 
even living, somebody posted something on social media a few weeks ago. Living has become so expensive mm -hmm. for you to feed, for you to clothe yourself, for you to pay school fees. Every sector, everything we've, every, in every sector of this country right now, we are witnessing a surge. We are witnessing an increase in mm -hmm. price for price of goods and services. So I think that this is not something very good for a, an economy as Nigeria. Okay, Nigeria but, uh, has one of the biggest economy, but right now with mm -hmm. this. This is going to take us aback as a country. What do we do? What do we do about food? Because that's my concern. Because the food inflation is one of the issues, that, you know, that um, drove um, you know, the inflation yeah. that high. And by the day, it's as though it is not coming down. You know, we keep on spending more on food items, and the federal government comes out to tell us that uh, they've uh, brought some intervention. The next month, the inflation is uh, increasing. Cardoso was, uh, that's the CBN governor, Yumi Cardoso, yeah. was just before the House of Reps yesterday, and he was saying that our external uh, reserve um, has actually gone up um, in 15 months. Uh, you know, but I, I still don't get it. If our external reserves have gone up and that we, our Naira is still, you know, devalued compared to the, 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 the dollar, you know, in the international forex market, because almost everything is pegged on the dollar, yet yeah. we are not seeing these changes. Yeah, so one of the biggest issues we're having as a country is... Uh, our Naira, our Naira has been devalued every other day. Mm. And we've seen that our government keep churning out policies that are good on paper, as you have said. But in the real world, in the real world of people living in the country, we've seen that what's happening it. is They're what's not it at all. So again, so, so I, think, I think it's high time we take a cue and look at countries that have you know, low inflation rates and see how they're able to keep up with that rate. I mean, for us to have a figure of 32%, 0.70% is a, is a big blow on the economy. And if care is not taken, it's going to stifle, continue to stifle mm -hmm. the economy more. Businesses will continue to suffer. Mm -hmm. In a country where we pay, where we have just announced a minimum wage of 70,000 naira, mm -hmm. somebody was saying 70,000 naira cannot even buy a bag of rice, which is the real truth. So for a family of five, how do you want to live on 70,000 naira? And now we have an inflation rate of 32%. So this is a problem. And one of the things high inflation will do to us as a country is that it is going to continue to take us back as a country. Mm -hmm. We are going to have a high, I mean, people will continue to, living is now very, very expensive. Now to, to feed, to clothe, very expensive. And if you are not careful, inflation might take us to a recession where people will no longer be able to do anything again with money. Mm -hmm. And if, I mean, we've had a recession one time, even biggest countries of this world do experience recession. But I, I hear all of this, but yes. I, I'm still okay because okay. How are we expected to grow or yes. uh, the economy uh, by 3.2 percent? You know, uh, this year, and he said about 3.3 percent in 2025, yes. and he said a, a robust uh, growth rate of 4.3 is anticipated in the long term. That is what the CBN part of what he said. Yes. The CBN governor said that yesterday. You know, at the, the House of Reps because. How are we growing when we cannot even feed? Yeah. You know, like you just gave an analysis of 70,000 Naira yes. minimum wage and a bag of rice, which is above that. I'm just thinking, for instance, for an average worker who earns 70,000 Naira, you know, you have um, four children, you know, if you just even want to manage two, five, I don't even know how 5,000 that can be enough for a day. <laughs> You know, just do yeah, that. Seven, five five thousand are for your kids. You and your kids, four children, a family of five for one day. I don't know how far we go. Even if you're going to do five thousand a day, calculate that for thirty days. Just I'm just talking about feeding, not yeah. even transportation costs. Yeah, so we've said it. We've said it that feeding <sighs> feeding takes up almost ninety or eighty percent of our monthly income as a people in this country now. Because we've seen that the cost of food, have, you know... That means we are just working to eat. So so the only thing that, that... We said it now, that people can no longer even have any savings right now. Because even to the, the little money you have is not even enough to feed yourself or your family. Talk less of extended family. So right now, yeah. most of... Uh, so like 80 to 85% of our income right now goes on feeding. Talk yeah. So so we've not even started talking about clothing. We've not started talking about rent. Yeah. We've not started talking about fees for school and all that. So... Yeah. So the honest truth, I, I, I honestly think that the, the government, the federal government, needs to really do something about this. I mean, what, we've what, seen, what, what, we've do, seen... what, what do you suggest? Because doing something about it, Mustafa, you know, each time we come here, we we'll talk about um, the issues. We we'll talk about what government should do. It's as though either they are not listening or they don't really know exactly what to do, or they just come out with textbook approaches. At yeah. the end of the day, we are suffering.
and even the elites, the one, the the, the politicians, they, they, they don't even, they're not even filling all the pinches, all the bites that the average Nigerians are filling. Yes, so, so the first thing I think that this government needs to do, and we have to direct this to CBN, is yes, they have increased interest rate just last month, the uh, benchmark yeah. interest rate. They should give it time for that to take its full effect in the economy. Give it at least 12 months. Yeah. I'll be, I'll be, I'll be, I'll be very shocked to see Yemi Kadoso come again in the next two, three months to increase interest rate again. I'll be very shocked because that is going to take this country to a place that we don't, we don't want to get to. Yeah. So let them, let them allow the first approach, which is increasing the, because one of the biggest ways, like I've said, that yeah. other countries have adopted and that has worked is increasing the interest rate, the benchmark interest rate. When you do that, you are taking, you are practically reducing the, the inflationary, pre, um, you know, pressures yeah. and you're taking out the liquidity the excess of the liquidity in the economy so once you do that give it 12 months to 18 months and let's see how that will that will drastically bring down this inflation rate but in a place where we don't allow it to take its full circle moment and we just go every other month to increase the interest we will, we, i mean it would continue to you know deepen this problem so another thing i think we can do is to try and stabilize our naira our naira has been devalued every day Every day, and our naira is weak. Let me button. Did yes. we go wrong by, you know, floating the naira? Did we go wrong by, you know, removing fuel subsidy? Because that's where the whole thing yes. started since last year. Well, to be very honest, I think that at the time when uh, Mr. President removed fuel subsidy, I, I, I didn't. I don't think that the country was ready for it, yeah. because I, before you take as a business, as a business owner, or as 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 a CEO of a company, before you take certain decisions, you would have you know appraised and overhaul that policy very well before taking it, you know, implementing it. So before we, before President took off props, I think that there are certain things that should have been in place yeah. before he did that. But I think that it, it made an announcement at the very wrong timing. And yeah. this, and this is the ripple effect. This is the resultant effect of what we're seeing now. So if you want to remove press, um, uh, subsidy, you should have put in other infrastructures. You should have put, you know, invested monies into other sectors of the country that will cushion that effect. But the president removed fuel subsidy, the price of fuel, you know, petrol went up, prices of every other thing went up, and this is what we're seeing now. So I think that, I mean, even though they said that the first subsidy was removed, I do not even think that it was removed. That's the honest truth. <laughs> because I think it was removed on the news, but in the real sense, in practical, it wasn't removed. Because if first subsidy was removed, we will not be paying 1,200 naira for fuel now. I bought petrol somewhere yesterday for 1,200 naira per liter. So this is crazy. So why do you, so, so, so it's better that the subsidy wasn't even removed. Mm. Probably we'll have been buying what, uh, at, the, at the rate we were buying before mm. the uh, removal of first subsidy. So I, so I just think that the government needs to put up a committee to look at, to overhaul this sector critically. That's the, I'll see our policies, our monetary policies. Okay. Because for me, if you continue to go with this approach, mm. we're, we're taking one step forward and 20 steps backward. What do we do about food then? In the immediacy, what do we do about food? Because most of all, I say a hungry man is an angry man. Because yes. if you've not eaten, you know, all sort of thoughts, all sort of ideas, you know, come to your head. We're not surprised when Nigerians went to the street, the hunger, you know, end hunger um, protests and all yeah. that. Because by the year or by the day, you know, food prices are increasing and Nigerians cannot do anything about it. The federal government will over time tell you they've released their, you know, grains and all of that. Yet it is not working. But how do we sort out this issue of food inflation? First things first, because Nigerians need to go to bed with their stomachs filled. So I think I think the way the first way to combat food inflation for me, I think is to uh, you know invest money in our agricultural sector. Mm. Most of the things we eat, as we speak today, they are imported. Most of the things, even the, even the locally made Nigerian rice, if you even try it, you might not, you might not even be palatable to the mouth. That's so what, most, I, I thought that was like, even the better. I've never eaten by rice. So most of the things we eat yeah. largely right now, we're mm. still importing. So, and that's because our, agric our farmers are not, you know, you know, uh, you know, giving an environment that is friendly for them to work. Even the I've said it secure. before. Yeah, they are not even secure. I've said it before. In a country where food security is a problem, in a country where our farmers cannot even go to the farm freely without the fear of being kidnapped or being so. So that means so I, I know people who have farms in outside in outskirts of different parts of different mm. states. They cannot even go there because of the fear of being kidnapped or secure or security issues. They cannot even go there because of bad roads. They can't go there because they are facing challenges. 
no water, a farmer will generate his own water, a farmer will generate his own, mm. construct his own road, a farmer will provide his own transformer for his own, fact, for his own farm to run effectively. Look at what happened just a few days ago. Our national grid, grid collapsed. Mm. People were thrown in darkness, if I, Monday and Tuesday. Two, two, three days mm. ago. So, is it, I mean, is it only Nigeria that we have national grid? <laughs> I, well, I mean, I've been to Kenya. Kenya had one one month, I mean, 24 hours light. I was there for one month. Mm. If the light did not blink. Don't they have national grid? Why didn't that national grid collapse? And the same thing is also playing out in our banking sector now. People are all over places hungry. They have money in banks. They cannot withdraw. So wh what is really wrong with us in this country? Something is just wrong. I think that... So uh, the, the, the solution to... I mean, the, the Nigerian problem is, has gone beyond Because prayers. we suffer from the most natural thing that we should enjoy. And most of our problem, Justin, let me tell you, there are man-made problems. Where the cost of these problems by ourselves. Sure. We have the... We, if we really want to make this country work, we yeah. will make it work. But because, because our leaders do... I mean, on our side, you yes. talked about... Let's even talk about the banks for, for, for 30 seconds. My, yes. my director now will not push me out of here. But yes. the thing is that... You sent messages and said that um, by Friday you'd be shutting down, you know, you know, just uh, skeletally. Uh, then from Sunday for about eleven hours you'd not um, you know, be able to uh, handle your customers. People, people cannot access, people the money can the have access to. And people, you have funds, and yet yeah. you can't use your phone. You can't use your phone. You cannot buy people. I know people who are practically on. I know companies who have not been paid salaries from last month because of these banking issues. They were practically mm -hmm. begging for food. So these are issues. So what is really what? Are, so what sector of this country is really working? Our oh. financial sector is giving us problems. Our cultural sector is giving us problems. Elect power too, problems. Oh. So, I, so I think that our, our problem has gone beyond prayers. We need to have that will to make this country work, and that's um, what we need to do as a people. Most of all, we have to just uh, rest the anchor on it because yes. when we talk about the economic issues in Nigeria, we could go on and on talking about it because practically everything you know. Has a bit of a challenge and the downside of this justin is that investors are not are just looking at us with the high of mockery hmm. people want to nigeria has a lot of opportunities people want to bring in money to invest look at the inflation the look at what, how can people come in with this you know with this oh. stops in place uh, most of all we have to go right now but so uh, we'll talk about the issues again uh, some other salient issue uh, next week and uh, many thanks for your time we just thank hope you, that all of this will be nipped in the bud because if we don't eat how do we even have the energy to work? How do we, you know, build our productive, um, you know, sector? How how do we move as a country? You know, and everyone gets angry when they are hungry. So this is just a call to government to do the right thing. And Nigerians cannot afford, you know, to be hungry in their own land. Well, we have most of these produces here yeah. in the country. Yeah. That's the size of the show for today. I don't know get too impassioned with about um, the whole thing going on in the country. Uh, Business Insights returns to your screen same time next time. My name is Justin Akadoni. Many thanks for being there.